Valentine's Day. Also give thanks for this, the sunshine and um, where I'm at, it's sunshine in any way. And we also ask you to watch, watch over our elders and our children and um, keep them safe and strong. And we ask for a prayer for all of our neighbors and our friends. And we give thanks for the moisture that we're getting um, throughout this spring season. Komiate. Uh, the sun's not shining where we're at, Carol, just so you know. Nita. On page five, where I'm inquiring about the livestock feed program, I'm wondering if I can follow up with Greg. He was supposed to have gotten back to us the, uh, yesterday. So he's on at 1130. Maybe I can ask him at that time. Yes, please do. Thank you. Go ahead, Martin. Uh, bottom of page one, if I could just add in a, um, uh, the second sentence, I guess, could we just put, uh, it was a good event. And <clears throat> the people that stopped for lunch, uh, we're very thankful to tribal council for the meal, something. Thank you. Of the April 12th minutes with corrections. Motion by Len to approve the April 12th minutes with corrections. Second by Anita to approve the April 12th minutes with corrections. Any further discussion? Seeing none, show of hands for approval of the minutes. Unanimous. Okay, we have our agenda. Any additions to the agenda? Martin? Uh, just uh, update for open, please. Thank you. Okay. Lynn? Open session? Yes. Okay. I have uh, just a couple of updates. So. Anything else, Anita? Mr. Chair, I'd make the motion to approve the April. Okay, motion by Anita to approve the um, April 19th minutes with additions. Is there a second? Second by Jennifer. All those in favor, show of hands. Unanimous. Okay, Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just wanted to start um, kind of letting people know about our events coming up um, next month already. Um, so we are planning um, the Bison Range event, um, kind of a celebration of our reacquiring, um, getting back what was already ours, uh, however you want to look at that. Um, <clears throat> there'll be the so big celebration will be the 21st, but we are planning a powwow for the 20th. So that's kind of what I'm looking to get out there. Um, we are going to have it down at the Bison Range um, and hopefully get as many people out to attend um, as possible. Um, obviously, following the whatever safety precautions we need to, depending on how the, our, our numbers are in the area, we'll, we'll take all those precautions. But um, we're kind of getting back to some kind of normalcy if whatever that'll be. So um, again, that'll be the 20th down the Bison Range. It'll just be a small kind of mini powwow. Um, we're going to invite some drums and um, 
possibly uh, provide some uh, their gift cards or, or we're not sure what we're going to do for for kind of people that are participating so we'll do something good and then obviously a meal as well so um just want to get that out there so less than a month to get your outfits ready <laughs> thank you thank you mark thank you mr chairman and members of the council um in regards to the um bison range uh yesterday we had a brief discussion on the planning process on, on how we're going to move forward with um, planning the new access to to the bison range not really sure not really knowing what that would entail i just wanted to um get council concurrence today probably through a motion to have our executive team begin the planning process of uh, uh, getting that access to the bison range changed to the top of to, to the top of Barbara Valley Hill. So, with that said, I I would just make the motion that we have our executive team start that planning process. Okay, motion by um, Len to start the planning process for a bison range access at Ravalli Hill scenic turnout. Second, Mr. Chair. Second by Ellie for the administrative staff to start the planning process for um, a bison range access from Ravalli Hill scenic turnout. Any further, or is, is there any further discussion? No, go ahead, Martin. Should we include in that motion the thoughts on three chiefs? Well, my understanding was that they were preparing an RFP to um, prepare for the building design, according to what Rick had said yesterday. So that may change depending on the site location. But I think the intent is what actually do they need for a really good building that I would assume that footprint and floor space would be um, usable in any place that we, we plant the building or construct the building at. But I don't know that for sure. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, show of hands. Unanimous, I think. All right, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, thank you. Thank you, Len. And then I had uh, just a couple updates, remind everybody for the Earth Day event on Friday at the college. Um, and, uh, you know, some workshop items. And then also on the news this morning, I saw a teaser for the KPAX Jill Valley story about the food. Um, distribution program over at the college, out of the college cafeteria. So that's um, going to be a feature story, I think, positively Montana type story, I believe, that what I saw this morning. I just want to remind you, everybody. That Do we have to register? For the um, Earth Day event, I think that Mike Durgola was asking people to pre-register, yeah. so they, they were trying to limit the number of people, I think. I don't know exactly why, but uh, maybe for the food or um, fitting into the, the theater building. I'm not yeah. exactly sure. I think they're going to have uh, a lot of it in the theater. And those were my updates. I want to make sure you do about the, the news at 530. So if you want to watch it. Carol? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I was just curious, can somebody refresh my memory about the if there's a resolution, you know, the seven resolutions we have, does that include climate change somewhere? Because, you know, I really feel like we're in the forefront and we can do so much more in the way of, of climate change. But I would, if there's not, I would like to see a specific resolution on, on climate change for CSKT. Maybe just something to think about and ponder a little bit, but if it's not, I, I would like to see it done.
I'm not exactly sure that the, that it is in the different resolutions it's kind of uh when you talk about food sovereignty that type of stuff it's kind of intertwined in Go ahead, Mark. i would i mean it's one of those ones where you know why not so I, I think that we could direct the executive team to come up because I mean that that is something that like um, one of my you know looking back two years ago, which seems like a lifetime ago, um, that was one of the big things I want to do something very simple like a recycling program within the tribe. Um, you know it was done through <clears throat> your shop up there for a while, but that was grant funded and it went away and. You know, some departments kept up on it and other departments didn't. And if it was, I mean, something as simple as that, like reduce our, our footprint, um, you know, I think our, our team could come up with something very significant and, you know, and it should, it's one of those crazy things that should go without saying, you know, as, as tribal people, we are stewards of the land, which in turn makes us stewards of the earth and, and, you know, so we shouldn't have to spell it out, but like a lot of things, we need to spell it out. So thank you. Yeah, you know, one of the things when, I think I brought it up when uh, really um, polluting two cycle engine that contributes more to um, carbon in the atmosphere than any other motor. And uh, so it's like, you know, a lot of times we just, you have to really force yourself to get out of the paradigm that we're in and think about it. Like, what did I do today? To, did it, could I have bought something different? Could I, uh, could I have, you know, brought my own grocery bag instead of using another plastic one? Um, could I, you know, could I have my own um, hydro flask that I don't ever put any coffee and I don't need a plastic cup or, you know, there's really simple things, little things you can do like this hydro flask. And I've had this thing for almost 10 years now. And, uh, I fill it up with coffee everywhere so I don't have to, you know, do that. Same thing with water bottles. And, um, you know, there's just a lot of little things you can do. Talk about our fleet and, you know, slowly moving things over to electric and, and being a major electric producer, we would think it would be in our best interest to promote um, electric cars, electric lawnmowers, you know, electric heat instead of oil heat. Um, just a lot of different things. So. You know, if we build a new building, does it really have to be on propane or, or oil? Could it be electric? Go ahead, Nita. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And it seemed like we did approach this last year uh, a few times, like when NRD come in and talked about putting up those electric stations, we were pushing it then about trying to buy electric vehicles. So I do think that we've talked about it. It's just a matter of maybe being more mindful every day and the things, the decisions that we make to, to push, you know, for the climate. And, but it seemed like we did talk about that being a, a big issue. And it was one of Joe Biden's issues, you know, with the climate, although he's happened to switch a few of his ideas, but thank you. Yeah, it could be expressed in its own separate resolution as Carol suggested. Um, we could put a draft together and bring it forward. Carol, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, listening to all of you, um, just kind of tells the reason why we need to do it because. No, <laughs> yeah, Jennifer. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. And you know, as a tribe, I would like to see us think about the potential for solar and new buildings that we build and how we can make our new buildings more um, environmentally friendly and what, what that would mean and what that would look like. Um, and I think we can be innovators in that regard, you know, and maybe capturing gray water and, you know, we can really think differently about how we build in the future. And, you know, many years ago when I was in Canada, um, plastic water bottles were banned at public events in the city that I was in. And they, they, it was on the radio when they were announcing this event, they said, make sure that you, if you want to drink water there, bring your own water bottle, we'll provide water that you can fill up your water bottle, but there are, it was banned. 
I mean, we can take an action like that at our buildings and we ask for no water bottles, plastic water bottles um, at our events and just tell people to bring water bottles. I mean, something like that. So we just, as an organization, don't buy them anymore. Good point, Jennifer. Um, yeah, I mean, that would, uh, that's what a resolution would probably provide for us that people would uh, have that course filter that they go through on anything that they, they do or support or their activity. And, and that course filter would, would get rid of some of the stuff that's contributing to climate change. Go ahead, Martin. And, and that's one of the problems with COVID was that it eliminated feeding in a way that's like reduces that. Now we're, you know, we're boxing everything um, because it's safer and more sanitary and all that. And like, I feel like we took a step back. It's really hard to do a community water type thing unless it was motion activated and you know all of that but you know we can get there and i agree with that like it, it's um like yeah i have water bottles and coffee cups that I've left in my car that i'm really itching to go get so but no i mean the, the elimination of you know our even our areas out here i mean all of us should have cups there's plenty of them up in the cupboard that we'll donate to the staff in the buildings you know to use that rather than I mean, just don't provide them. And people will make do. Already, well, we'll uh, oh, we'll um, work on a draft resolution. And uh, go ahead, or, uh, Jennifer. <laughs> One thing I wanted to say with the boxes: there are compostable boxes, and even silverware that are compost compostable that just biodegrade eventually. I know they're more expensive, but that, that those do exist. Yeah, for the river honoring program, we went to biodegradable um, silverware, you know, um, bamboo products. And then um, for all the kids, because it could be really hot, we, we were providing water bottles for every kid, you know, like unlimited water bottles, plastic water bottles. And uh, then we said, no, we're only going to, Bring your own. If you have to have one, we'll give you just one. You know, the big jugs of water that they would uh, refill their water with. And that worked out really well because it was a message, you know. It was a learning moment for those kids to see that, you know, why aren't you having us all have our own little 12 ounce water bottle, you know? Well, because that's hard on the environment, that plastic, all the energy and petroleum products, et cetera, and the litter, the microplastics that they're basically out there because of it. So, um, and it was really a, a good thing for the kids. And then if you can give gifts, as Carol said, that are related to it, you know, that could be part of the bison range event, that we're gonna give something that uh, is useful, that has a shelf life of a long time, that replaces some consumable, um, something that, that would be uh, negative instead we turn it into a positive. Um, that's really good stuff, I like it. So, We'll work on that. That's a consensus of council. Thank you, Carol, for bringing that up. You're welcome. Okay, if there's no other items, we'll, can we jump to our first agenda item? Paul. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? We sure can. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so it's my first time doing this. Um, exactly what is it you guys are looking for? I am putting in for capital equipment on um, a in-body or a, uh, let me pull it up real quick. It's the Evolt 360 that we're going for. Um, they are body composition analysis machines. Um, we currently only have one. Um, we do not have, uh, you know, so we constantly trying to get it from location to location. Um, the one that we want to go for is one that is, um, it has an app that comes with it. It's really user-friendly. 
Um, all four machines uh, can record the same information uh, far as like we can run analysis reservation wide rather than per machine. Um, you know, so like when we do walk in the res, things like that, we can have people come in and start uh, at the starting and then in the middle and at the end so that they can record their progress of um, their body composition. Sounds like a good device. Go ahead, Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've avoided those to yeah. no end, but they're great. Paul, so I'll make the motion to uh, for the purchase of the capital equipment. Motion by Martin to approve the purchase of new exercise equipment for the Tribal Health uh, Fitness Centers. Uh, motion or uh, seconded by Bing for the approval of the new exercise equipment for the Tribal Health Fitness Centers. Any further discussion? I got one question, Paul. If I look at it, will that make me fit? I'm not just looking at it, but it'll give you a good idea where you're starting and show you the progress as you go along. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor? Show of hands. Unanimous. Thank you, Paul. All right. Thank you. Next, we have um, a resolution for Tuigo River School. Amelia, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, so this resolution is for Tuigo. Um, you guys approved uh, them submitting the application on April 5th. But Rodney didn't have a resolution prepared yet. And um, so that's why I'm here today to get this resolution signed. And actually the, the grant is due tonight. So uh, by, by 10 p.m. our time, midnight Eastern time. So it's kind of important I get it signed today. So that's why I'm here, so. Kind of like the uh, federal income tax deadline, huh? Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of, we're running out of time, but yeah, if I could get this signed and then we'll get the grant submitted for two evil. Okay, we will do her. Motion awesome. by Len to approve the resolution approving Tuiga River School to submit an application and accept Native Youth Community Project grant from the Office of Indian Education. Second by Jennifer for the approval of the resolution. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, show of hands. Unanimous. Thank you, Amelia. All right, thanks you guys, have a good day. You too. Okay, we'll jump to the Paddle Palooza. Yes, uh, well, kinda. Nancy, good morning. Hi, good morning. I'm just uh, waiting to see if a couple of my cohorts are getting on here. Thank you for taking the time to see us and meet with us this morning. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to review some of the, the items that I had sent to Jen. Um, can everybody hear me okay? We can. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll try to be brief and concise. So we are, I represent a group here in Missoula, Silver Lining Foundation. Um, we are a breast cancer group. Um, oh, you can delete that one. The sponsorship, we're not looking for money. <laughs> um, there you go. That's, yeah, that's cool. But um, anyway, we started out in Dragon Boats, which is a, it's uh, pertains to breast cancer survivors. There's over 300 teams around the world um, and has to do with health. Our big push is exercise as medicine because we know we it can reduce the risk of recurrence by 40 to 50%. 
And when COVID hit, we, uh, we moved to the outrigger canoes because we could be farther apart and for safety reasons. So we now have uh, five outriggers and those are the Tahitian style outriggers. If, if some of you are familiar with the, you know, with the outrigger on the side. Oh, there you go. Thank you. That's perfect. Um, Kimo Keo has become a mentor and a teacher for us. Um, we had the privilege of meeting him in Maui a couple of years ago. He is, he is a legend in Maui. Um, and now uh, he is a part of our family, our Ohana. Uh, so this Palooza, we, we are using it as a fundraiser for our Silver Lining Foundation, but we are really trying to circle up with more people, not just breast cancer survivors. Um, it is in mid-July when we scheduled it. We did not know that the standing arrow powwow was going on at the same time. And um, I, I believe that nothing is a coincidence. So we are secretly thrilled or not secretly. Um, and so our reason for coming to you is we'd like to involve the, we, we want to honor and we want to ask for permission to be on your land. We are leasing the the space next to the uh, fishing access, the Elmo Events Center. And that's where we will have all the canoes. Um, it's an invite, it's an invite event. As you know, that space doesn't really allow for, you know, a lot of parking or that sort of thing. Um, our real focus is going to be on voyage and really just building community. But what our thought was is possibly uh, on Friday evening, we would love to have some tribal members and um, connect in a ceremony where, you know, where A, we are, we are humbly, we are honored to be on your land and your water. And if we can ask for that in ceremony and combine, um, and I talked to Vernon, I, I can't see if Vernon is on here or not, but um, I talked to Vernon last week and we thought possibly if if we could do that ceremony at the tribal site there in Elmo, the where the boat put in is, and uh, and maybe even have a couple tribal members, you know, maybe we could have some represented representation on the boats as this. And I, I don't see this as being a long extended ceremony, um, but as the ceremony, you know, ends the the paddlers paddle out and they can, you know, paddle across to our event site. We don't have, there's not a big voyage going on Friday night. It is really just more um, ceremony and everybody will be rolling into town. We have teams coming from uh, Canada, from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, Kimo Keo is, Kimo Keo has paddled with all of the um, uh, tribes from the mainland and is very close to many of them. I think we have tribes coming from the Quinault and the Macaw. Um, and I'll, he can speak to that here in just a minute when I will um, introduce him, both him and Sean. And then Friday night or Saturday night uh, after the voyage where we have a 30 mile and a 22 mile voyage, Saturday night, we have uh, Dr. McKenzie. He's an MD from University of British Columbia. And he is the medical person who, um, oh, great. Thank you, Jen. I can burn in his on. Um, he will be talking about the importance of uh, exercise and, and how dragon bait boat, boating relates to breast cancer survivors. And part of our big push here is we would like to also, um, and we've been trying to make some connections on the res about um, kind of looping in some of the tribal ladies who have had breast cancer treatment and that sort of thing. So um, we have activities going on Saturday morning, Saturday night and Sunday morning. And so we, I've talked to Joe Derglo and um, some of the folks at the ho both hospitals and seeing if we can, can find um, some of those ladies and and create more community for them and opportunities because we will be the dragon boats we paddle on salmon lake typically because the water is a little big on flathead as uh, you know how that water can change um, but the outriggers are you know they're built for ocean going they big water so um, I also I'm, I'm talking really fast here, but I also had a quick meeting yesterday with um, Ariana Matt and Rosie Matt, and I know they're starting a group called Paddle for Life, where they're trying to integrate the um, the traditional canoe back in and the those ways back into 
your people. And I know our canoes are not the traditional, but I think there is great opportunity for us to circle up, whether it be youth or, um, you know, adults, kids that are getting out of high school, you know, looking for for you know things to do and we know the healing power of water we know the healing power of power of phys physicality um social camaraderie uh all all of that so that in a nutshell is it i'm going to uh introduce here uncle are you on this chemo ko and sean ryan oh it looks like he's trying to connect still um sean is uh, one of our silver lining ladies, she is, I'm sure probably most of you know, Sean, she's Salish. Sean, are you able to yes. show your video? Um, I'm new to the Zoom, so uh, let's see. The host has asked to start your video. Okay. I think I'm here. I see you. <laughs> this is all very new to me. Has flexed. Uh, Good to be with you all. Thank you for allowing us to have this time. Um, it's my first time before tribal council. So um, I feel honored and nervous, but um, Nan has asked me to stand with her and beside her and I'm grateful to be able to do that. Uh, as a tribal member, um, I've been diag diagnosed with uh, cancer eight months ago and uh, as um, anyone who's ever had cancer knows uh, it can take a toll on you mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. And uh, my mother's also uh, Alice Rose Sorrell Ryan, and uh, she's also a two-time breast cancer survivor. And um, so when it came into my world, it was not a real big surprise, but it was a real big impact. And so um, a couple of months ago, I was having a real hard time and, and I'd heard about this community called the Silver Linings Community and uh, I reached out to, to Nan and uh, I have had the opportunity to be with this community for a couple of months now working out with them. Um, as she said, they really believe in uh, exercise as, as medicine and um, I've always known myself to be a really strong person. And uh, yet when cancer came into my life, it really weakened me physically and on all other levels. And uh, I, I was high tenor teacher at SKC for almost seven years and worked with the Incusum kids for a few years, tanning hides and also with Two Eagle. And uh, <clears throat> That was the joy and the love of my life to be able to do that. And uh, so working through the cancer journey, I'm trying to find my strength again. And uh, I'm really grateful to Nan and the Silver Linings community for helping me to come back to myself, come home to myself, to get stronger again. And uh, so when Nan asked me to stand with her on this um, request, I was, I was grateful to be able to do that. And um, I look forward to someday being able to paddle next to them in the water, in the boats, and hopefully be able to do that with my native sisters as well. Um, I really respect Nan and the work that she's doing. I, I, I can see that she's coming with a good heart and she's trying to do things in a good way. And she's worked hard to, um, to care for a lot of people and support a lot of people. And so um, I stand here in support of her and uh, really hope that you'll find a way to um, hear her story and, and support her work in this time. And um, really, like she said, my hope too, is that we'll be able to reach out to other native women who have experienced the breast cancer in their lives and uh, want them to know that they don't have to suffer through this alone and that together we're stronger. And uh, as Nan always says, you know, we're all in this boat together and uh, we're strong and we're community. And so I just um, stand here in support of that and hope that I can be a part of that journey with her and, and with our native sisters and uh, see where it goes. Um, I haven't been in the boat yet, but 
uh, look forward to that possibility and look forward to meeting Kimo Keo too. So um, Lam Lamsh for giving us this time and hearing our story. To you and, and Lem Lamsh for sharing that with us. That's very, very powerful words you just shared with us and, and I really appreciate that. So, um, and, I, and I hope and wish you and pray for you for the best of, of outcomes. So um, thank, you. thank you, thank you, Lem Lamsh. Lunch. So really quick. Anita? Yes, I'd like to thank you, ladies. And there's not very many of us who's who's not either had it ourselves or someone in our families and and even in men. Um, mm -hmm. it's not uncommon anymore to find out that that they have got breast cancer and I've had it in my family. So I appreciate everything that you're doing out there. I know it's a hard battle. You know, I've witnessed what it's done to people and some have been successful and some not, but I appreciate everything you're doing and, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. We, we just keep listening to the universe and I think, uh, yeah, I think just, I really believe that building community just creates more healing. So uh, with that, I, I see that uh, Kimo Kale has gotten on and, uh, I think you might have missed the brief intro, Uncle, but I'll let you say hello and maybe share your experience with the other tribes that you've worked with and who's coming to our event. I'm honored to be before you and to share um, what we uh, all are doing, not only what Nan is doing, but what you have done with your own um, nation. And uh, we paddled for life here on the island of Maui for 14 years this year. And we've gathered people from all over the world and different tribes. Um, this year we have with us Invitational is the Quinault tribe and the Macaw tribe. And uh, they paddled with us here for the last 10 years on the island. And uh, we have gone to the West, not Pacific Northwest and paddle uh, with the tribal journey amongst uh, 50 nations and 135 canoes uh, during the Washington shores. And we're planning to go back um, latter part of May after uh, before Paddle uh, Palooza to paddle with the Lamy tribe to San Juan Lopez and the Orchid Island. But more, more importantly that uh, Nan and has come to the island and learned how to do that. And uh, we wanna share uh, what is all our problem is um, cancer and uh, as, as a lady before me I explained uh, before Nan, it is all our problem and uncle was encouraged by knowing that my grandma, my mom, my dad and my uncles passed on cancer. So it was a motivation for me to help our people, our nation to um, get back in the canoe and um, not that we have not been, but get back in the canoe and address a physical strength within ourselves. And we say, Mahalo Napoe Kalani, our ancestors of the heaven, Napoe Kamawana, ancestors of the ocean, Napoe Kono, ancestors of the land that guide us and protect us in this journey that we have together. So I know we have limited time, but uh, I want to thank Kutnik um, Salish, uh, I'm not sure I pronounced it right, so correct me if I'm wrong, or Salish Kutnik, but uh, we thank you for. Um, allowing us to be before you. I'm honored and uh, privileged to come to Big Sky, uh, Montana, to paddle amongst with you and share um, our help to help our nations, not only yours, but help our nation uh, all together to have a better quality of life um, by challenging cancer with physical, um, cultural, spiritual and cultural uh, with the canoe. So mahalo, thank you very much. And I say, Koma Koma Koi Kalani, Hona Yaya Koinoa, Mahalo Yue Lukuluku Maikai, Olulupu Maikai, Mahalo Keakua, I thank the Great One, Mahalo Na Amakua, I thank the Guardian Angels, and Mahalo Na Kupuna, I thank our ancestors, and Mikealo Pumihana, I say with the greatest love of all, Mahalo. Mahalo, Uncle, great words, and appreciate your work in this. Um, very, very um, important, and I can understand. Your sincerity and and um, and healing and and doing this for your people and for all all native peoples uh, 
and all people uh, that are that are have uh, awareness and, and need to to heal. So really appreciate it. Lem Lemsh. Go ahead, Len. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council and, and Nancy, I wanna thank you and Sean for uh, your for your um, efforts in reaching out and collaborating with the tribes on, on this on this event. Um, this is pretty exciting having this in Elmo, especially during the uh, Standing Girl powwow. We also would um, um, like to invite you all to um, um, come over to the Standing Arrow powwow and we all can uh, um, share song and dance, share our cultures together. And um, I uh, really look forward to um, participating in this. So I would just want to thank you guys all for, um, for your efforts. So thank you. Thank, thank you. We would be honored to uh, attend. That would be awesome. And uh, maybe if I think uh, Vernon, maybe Vernon can speak. Um, and I don't know who we would communicate with in terms of planning for this, um, for the little ceremony on Friday evening, if we can do that, where we ask for permission, but maybe Vernon can kind of help lead us in that direction. Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> good morning again, Council. Um, yeah, you know, um, when, when I heard of uh, Nan's um, um, ideas and, and, and what was going to be happening and when it was gonna be happening, you know, it seemed like um, a lot of it was really falling into place. I don't know how many of you know that um, I was on the uh, canoe journey. Um, you know, my, my wife is Haida, and so, um, and so our son, me and my son, um, we hadn't really, or he hadn't really participated in, in an awful lot of his uh, coastal culture. And so the, um, the Swinomish tribe invited, the Swinomish canoe family invited us to join them. And so for a few years, he and I went out there and participated in the canoe journey. And the way, you know, um, it wasn't, you know, uh, that journey is mostly focusing on the youth and and the next generations and <clears throat> giving them the the proper perspective and attitudes and cultural knowledge and awareness um, of the, of the canoe and the respect for all things and if you can imagine, you know, uh, um, they. I don't know how familiar you are with it, but they go to um, they go to different stops. There'll be um, like if the final destination um, was down at Macaw, then all of the other um, canoe families journey day by day to that um, to the to that final stop, and um, and they uh, every day they stop somewhere else and they ask permission to come ashore from the local tribe that is there. And the tribal leaders are there and welcome them ashore and feed them, um, and then they share some of their culture. They share they share their culture with uh, with the local group, their their dances and their songs, and but if you can imagine, you know, I mean, the, the, this is mostly youth that are doing this uh, with with uh, a lot of the um, elder leaders, um, encouraging them and showing them the way and teaching them along the way, and if you can imagine a camp of about a thousand, you know, where there was putting up tents in one of the stops and there would be like a thousand teenagers, all clean and sober, you know, powerful stuff, powerful stuff. You know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's really good. So we can, I, I kind of got a, um, earned a lot of respect for, you know, and, and the way that they, the way that they feel about the water and the way that they know what the water can do and the power in the water. And um, it was at a time when we was doing our own water stuff, you know. Um, uh, and so we was kind of, you know, uh, the, the whole water thing, theme was really um, uh, come forward in our lives at that time. And and seeing all of it and seeing what, uh, what what it can do for the youth. And now 
seeing this uh, as a way of treat, treatment for uh, cancer and things, you know, it's, 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 it's um, uh, really a good thing. You know, the, um, the Kootenai canoe was, um, you know, was kind of a, a, a different thing, you know, and so, um, and so getting back to the canoes, I mean, the highways previously, you know, um, were the, were the rivers and the streams. And so, you know, it was, uh, it's, it's, it was kind of good to get back in a canoe and kind of, um, you know, uh, spark that. So hearing all of that, when I, when, when I first, um, uh, talked with Nan, I was under the assumption that there was going to be kind of like the Washington canoe journey. I didn't really, you know, um, understand exactly what it was about, but the more that I talked with her and the more that I realized what, what was going on here, I really wanted to, uh, support this. And, and, and I thought that it was very, um, prophetic that, uh, that it was happening during the standing arrow power. And I told her, you know, we can, you, you know, um, she wasn't even aware that, you know, um, outsiders could attend the powwow. And so I was telling her, you know, no, I, th I think, I think um, you should come over to the pow, the, the group you should come over to the powwow and be, and, and get introduced to, um, to, you know, some of our culture as well. You know, that would be, that would be really good. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> um, really wanted to support their ideas for, um, for, what they're doing with this. And so I just um, wanted to jump on here also and to, and to let council know that, uh, that um, we support the, the efforts here and we really appreciate um, Nan and her efforts. And, and you know, um, one of the things about it though, with the, um, you know, in the Kootenai culture, the, um, the cancer survivors probably wouldn't um, step out in something like this because it's um, culturally, you don't, you don't, uh, uh, I don't know, it's almost like Reagan that you, that, 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 that you come out of it and it's you know, challenging it to come back or whatever. And it's, um, and also, um, you know, um, just, just battling it yourself and, 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 and quietly and, and treating it with respect is um, kind of the way that the, the cancer survivors in the Kootenai community have, have gone through. So, um, so and, and this would be more too, too outward and more um, showy almost. And so the, the, they really wouldn't wanna, they really wouldn't want to do that. And, and um, but there may, there may be some of the younger ones that, that, um, that um, might participate in it, but the canoe part and the everything else that goes with it, the the, the community and the and the Kootenai culture committee really supports you know all of the efforts here. So I, I just wanted to come on and let 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 you know how much um, uh, we support we support what's going on. So thank you. Thank you, Vernon, for those kind words. And just to follow up on your um, your idea about the. The, the multiple day voyage, and I mentioned this to you, um, uncle has actually talked about wanting to do this in the future. And, you know, we have 161 miles of shoreline on Flathead Lake. And uh, that might be something that uh, next year is a possibility where we voyage to a particular site, we camp there, you know, and we go around the lake. Obviously, there's, you know, no tribal well, on the on the east shore, is there a tri is there a tribal is Finley Point tribal? Is that still on the reservation? Uh, it's on the reservation, of course. But on the on the east shore, the largest campground on the lake is owned and operated by the tribes. It's Blue Bay. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, that's just something that that we have talked about it, and um, might be a possibility in the future. So. I think that's, um, Nan, I thank you for that. And Bernie, I thank you for your words. And I just want to address the council that the experience that I had with uh, Tribal Nation and the Pacific Northwest uh, was the idea that uh, we would journey um, around uh, Flathead Lake uh, with all the tribe stops or things like that, like what Vernon had experienced. So 
I welcome uh, working with you on that and I welcome that uh, uh, the travel journey of the Flathead Lake. Um, so I just wanted to uh, point out that I did um, that voyage and I'm going back again, but I did learn about and shared with the youth, with all the tribes and I, I, I ditto all of the words that Vernon say and I, I understand uh, the women of uh, the Kutnik tribe um, not wanting to do that. And I, I appreciate that. But knowing that this journey is about our canoes and this journey is about our spiritual ancestors and the waters of our ancestors and what they've given us, we call it Kealakupuna, the pathway of our ancestors. So I look forward in meeting and talking to you about that, Vernon and the tribal nation and the tribal council. So mahalo for letting me to interrupt on this particular point. Thank you so much, mahalo. Any further questions for um, Nan or Sean or uncle? Very great program. I certainly uh, would assume that the consensus of council is is to proceed. I don't know if we need a formal motion to support um, this or not. But uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, um, since this will be on the lake, and, and there will be a lot of other folks. I don't know if a, a group recreation permit is in order or, or, or what? No, Vernon, uh, for this type of recreation on Flathead Lake, a, a, a permit isn't required. If they were going to engage in fishing, it would be. Um, but the, the issue, I guess, for, for NAM would be is um, the only question that I would have is liability. And I'm assuming that you have event insurance for this. And I would assume that the State Department of DNRC would require that also. So yes. as, as long as you have liability insurance um, to cover um, the event um, in case some something happens, um, that would be the only concern that I would have as, as um, a former uh, fish and game guy. Um, but I, I think that's it, Vernon. We wouldn't need a, um, a, a permit in that way. Uh, if you wanted to use uh, specifically uh, a tribal land for a picnic, something like that, like Blue Bay Campground or Elmo Tribal Park, then, then we would need to um, mention that they would have a free use group permit for it. Okay, thanks. Perfect. Well, thank you all for your time. And we are, we really are honored. I, I, I didn't realize how special this was to be able to get in front of council. So I look forward to many great things in the future. Mahalo. Lem Lamps, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, Lem Lamps and Mahalo. Thank you. Okay, we'll take a short break.
Okay, we'll uh, we'll move into executive session. <laughs>